and now I've got to work on the dial and then the glass when this clock was brought to me it came with the dial detached and inside the case and what I can see this is not original to this uh, this clock first off I think this dial pan is not original at all um, if this were manufactured in a factory it would have been cut nice and evenly I'm looking at this and I can see looks like this was cut out and hand sheared the holes here have pretty bad burrs on them the slots for the tabs on the bezel ring go in are extremely poorly made it's like they've been cut and recut this one clear through the edge this one you can see has been cut at least twice This one has been mangled, broken out. This one is not lined up. I'm trying to figure that's probably the top one that goes with the lines up with the toe holes, the winding hole, and center arbor. the bezel itself, the holes that are here for attaching it to the case should make some sense, but they don't. There are three blocks in the case where that bezel gets screwed into. There you can see been screwed in two, three, four, five times. That one at the top at least three times or more. And on the side here, God, you count them. I don't know. The other problem I run into is there's a hole up there that one doesn't line up anywhere near with that block there's not even a hole over there so if I turn it to the next hole there's no hole there for the block other holes are all over the place and I keep turning this and no matter how I turn it there's no position where three holes line up to the three blocks so this dial never went with this clock in the first place. So the dial pan has been manufactured by hand. This bezel then does fit with that dial pan because the little tabs do line up with the notches in the pan. It goes together. But if this went on that clock it wasn't ever attached properly so I'm going to have to make this one work by going to have to fill a bunch of holes that are, would never be used anyway and then remanufacture this by re-drilling the holes so they fit the blocks on the on the uh, the case and here's another indicator I just tried to put this bezel back on another indicator that something was really screwy with this whole dial look at the machine's scratch marks on that there and there and there you 
each one of these. I don't know what's going on with that, but marks all over. Yeah, all indications this this is not original. Okay, I guess the first thing I want to do is just want to clean this ring. I'm not sure what this is made from. It's so dirty and it's been painted. I'm not sure whether it's steel or whether it's brass. And uh, I'm going to strip some of it off and have a better look. So I'm going to start with some coarse. Let me just take in here a little bit. Where's my graver? Okay, this has a magnetic end on it. If it's steel, this will stick. If it's brass, it won't. Guess what? It's steel. So, we'll strip it and then we'll see what we can use to coat this to make it look brass. Alright, these holes are such a mess that this top, in essence, can slip and slide all over the place and uh, need to have these tabs just be able to bend down and remain tight. So, what I need to do is just take some metal and uh, cut notches in them like so. Cut a piece to go up tight against the against each tab uh, so they can bend over and it's not going to slide around. So we'll, we'll make some little cutouts and tabs to stick on. And I haven't decided whether I'll just glue them down with epoxy or whether I'll try soldering. Maybe I'll try soldering one and see how that goes. Okay, the little nibblers don't have to be deep. I don't really want them deep. So what I want to do is line up the nibbler here. Cut. like soldering is going to work. So what I'm doing is taking these pieces, putting them on here where I think they should go. This one's set, this one's set. Put this one up. Make sure everything is set right. Mark the edges with a marker. I know where to put them. Okay, we're going to take some of this flux and we're going to paint flux on where we want where we want to solder to go. We're going to take the back of the tab and put some flux on it. And then we're going to set this in place. Oh, that was nice. We're going to take some hemostats that Clamp it. Another hemostat on the other side. Clamp it. Set this on a rock. Add another dab of a little bit of 
solder right at that edge, or so, uh, flex at the edge. Then I'm going to take some of this solder and I'm going to cut a little tiny piece of it. And another little tiny piece. Come on, oh, that went nowhere. That was not a good idea. Okay, small pieces. Flat. Take my forceps. Put those pieces at the edge. Well, maybe. Take my torch. Heat the brass. There we go. Okay, drew the drew the solder underneath. Shut the shut the torch off. Just a second. And take the hemostats off. piece now that will be against the good cell and the slot is no longer sloppy so now we got three more to do we'll do those and I think that's going to work just fine so we got here so when that gets bent down and that gets bent down those are going to be nice and tight okay I got all five of those tabs, six of those tabs, now on there, all these have to do now is we have to bend each one of these down and that will fasten the uh, bezel to the dial pan and there won't be any more flopping around. And uh, then we, all we have to do is we have to clean this other side now attach the uh, paper dial and uh, we'll be set to go. Okay, preparing the side that has to have the dial attached to it. The, uh, I don't know what glue they used for the old dial, but it was quite a mess. So I'm Cleaning this now with 99% isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol, and it seems to be with that. That's good. That's good. Work well. 
Okay, good show. Okay, I have a new paper doll to put on. Draw a line through here. There's a small dot right here that shows the center of the dial. I'm going to center that dot in this uh, where the center arbor goes through. Take a marker where this has to be cut out. And I'm just going to go around with the marker. This goes. I've ordered some uh, grommets for the holes, brass grommets, at least for the winding holes so the key doesn't tear up the. Anyway, that's approximately where that needs to be cut out. And we'll cut it out. Okay, we have some watered down tight bond yellow glue and I'm just going to put this on here with a soft brush and put it on relatively liberally and Make sure the center part of this especially is well covered. Okay. Alright, like so. lined up. Should take care of it. Let it dry for half an hour or so. That paper will be absorbing the water. And we'll go from there. And we'll just let this dry now. Okay. I trimmed this off to the back and now <coughs> this has had the and what I did was I slit where each of those connectors is I slit that open so that these tabs can go through I'm 
it in the mail here before long and now we can put this onto the case and we're one step closer and once this is on then all we got to do now is get uh, get the glass done with the lettering on it. I didn't show it in the video but after I stripped the ring I applied this with a finger it's a uh, gilding gilding wax and uh, you just rub it on the metal and then polish it and it's done it just uh, looks like that so here's the dial that was in there and here's the dial that's going back in oh. Okay, haven't been down in a couple days. In the meantime, I ordered, just got my little box today. Ordered stuff from Time Savers. And what I have is three different sized brass grommets now that I can now use for putting on this dial. And they should have grommets because he's a bunch of sticking keys in here all the time. You're going to booger up the edge. And I think that's the grommet size for this one, like so. And then we'll bend these little tabs down. Let me see how we get a screwdriver. Anyway, what we do is this. Boy, those are stiff. These aren't as well made as some of the older ones, but that'll work. And then we have a nice grommet here. Now, we can also put one in here, and I think, yeah, it's not that big. This is a medium size. These are the bigger ones. So let's, uh, this one has a staple in it. Bigger ones should go in this hole just fine. And now we'll do the same thing. I'll bend those over on the back. And I'll go yeah. and bend those over in there. Now we have a nice, nice looking dial. And we can, uh, boy, that. See, they're not as well made as they used to be, but that works good. Set that back. All right, there's a whole bunch of holes in here. Let's see where we're sitting right now. If I put this right here. This is a little high. This actually needs to be up just a tiny bit. And that means this is getting in the way. And let's see if I can do that. What am I going to have to do to get that out of the way? Cut the wood. Or trim. Yeah, I'm going to have to trim a bit of this dial pan off here because it's hitting here, it's hitting the wood and not allowing that to be up where it needs to be. It needs to be up just a tiny bit so that this is centered. This isn't as crucial as this. So you've got to be able to get the key in there. So that should be fairly well centered. So what I'm going to have to do, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to trim this and I'll do that off camera.
Okay, I got it to fit now. What I ended up doing, it wasn't the dial pan, it was the actual uh, dial itself. So I had to trim this away, this block of wood. And uh, another indication that this dial is not original to this uh, to this clock. So we'll go ahead and we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill all these holes. I'll put a little stain on here. I'm going to fill these holes, let it harden, and we'll re-drill new holes. And for those of you, those of you who haven't seen it before, I'm going to use the uh, baking soda and super glue filling. And what we do, we just take some baking soda. soda, put it in the holes, and then what we do is we add a drop of super glue to the holes, let that sink in, and then we'll take a little bit more baking soda. Throw it on top. All right, and that basically instantly hardens. Now I can add final topping of super glue. Just a tiny bit. Anyway, the super glue combines chemically with that uh, baking soda and it hardens into a plastic material. Uh, somebody said that actually the baking soda acts as a catalyst and hardens the, baking, the uh, super glue faster. I don't know which it is. Anyway, that's hard like plastic right now. Let's set for a few minutes while I do these others. And then what we'll do is we will have a good solid base to drill new holes for the dial. And uh, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. Uh, put a piece of tape. I guess maybe I should keep it from spilling. Let's put a piece of tape in front of the holes. Take a blade with some baking soda on it. Spread it into the holes. Take a dab of super glue. And we'll spread that out. So we can sand that. That's the spot here. Okay. Done. And go back. Sandpaper. sand goes off, then we can put the dial on. 
Okay, so those it's all sanded off. Let's take a little of the stain again and we'll go over the whole thing. Make it look original. Okay, let that sink in. Take a cloth and wipe it off. And there we go. That looks good enough. Alright, now we can take that dial and we can put it on here and there it will be centered. That looks good I guess. So I'll put one, two, three screws in here, have the dial back on, then all I gotta do to finish this clock is to deal with with the glass and that'll be a new experience. Let's see how that's gonna look with the door shut. Everything shut okay. Yeah, that shuts just fine. Okay, so we'll put those screws back in. I marked that. I've got a change battery. Alright, let's see how this goes now. Maybe a tiny bit bigger. I guarantee you that uh, dial is not going anywhere. Okay. Push the hand down for the four. Okay. Put this one here. And what? Okay, dragging. Okay, dial is done. Now we got to do the glass. And, uh, all right. Now we got to hang it back up, and I look at it. And that dial is crooked. I'm going to have to redo the whole doggone thing because I'm going to have to re reset the uh, the movement itself. Is that just is cocked to the right? It's not good. Well, you want more evidence that, that dial never went with this clock? Pendulum is on. Drags on the back of the dial. Well, let's see if we can find a solution to that. Now, here's the pendulum. There's the hook. And this is put on. It, that's that makes the wood further forward so I think it was put on backwards 
I'm going to take that and move it around to the front. That'll make the wood hang further in. See if that does it. So, let's put on with little screws. Let's just take that off. on the other side like so well that sure as heck doesn't look like that's the way it went on but let's just see if it makes a difference okay uh, it doesn't tighten down don't like that. Let me look at this again. <sighs> okay. Those are the screws. Yeah, I actually took other screws and cut them off. There's barely any thread left in them. That's what I'm replacing. Okay, I don't like the way those these screws go in. It looks like somebody added them. There basically is no thread left on this one I to speak of. They've both been cut off. I uh, think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use some round-headed brass nails put them through and rivet them on the other side they'll be much better looking well that didn't work because those nice brass nails turned out to be steel nails they're just brass plated and they're too dang hard to rivet else ever got lots of different sized brass pins and the biggest ones I've got, in fact, don't go through. So if I cut these off, round them off, uh, they should rivet just nice. Uh, probably fire up the lathe, clean these up, make them right. And you uh, see the pins will go right through those holes. So we'll just make some rivets out of these. Okay. Here's this piece goes here. Here's my two little rivets I made from the and. Those will go in here. Oops. Yeah, they will if I don't drop them on the floor. And the other one goes in here. There's my two little rivets. Then those will go through the holes here, like a washer on the other side. And we'll put that on here. Oop, wrong way. Maybe I need to cut it shorter. Okay, it looks like I've got to cut it a little shorter. Cut it a little smaller. And that will go here on those rivets.
Yeah, the riveting wasn't working out very well because the wood started to make the wood split. So I gave up and just uh, used the rivets, but uh, epoxied them in. So it's ready to go back on the clock now. Okay, we got everything running right now. Fixing the pendulum stops it from rubbing. And now all I have left to do is to fix up the glass. And we're done. Okay, here's the upper glass as it exists. And uh, I don't like the way this paint is all chipping off. So I think we'll. Maybe I can just end up taking the black off, touching up the gold, and uh, repainting the black. I think that's what I'll do. Save an awful lot of time and trouble. Yeah, the inner part of the gold circle is 11 and a quarter inches. 11 and a quarter, and the other one is. Uh, Eleven and thirteen sixteenths. <clears throat> okay, I put some of this material on here, and uh, I just decided to redo it from scratch. And I scribed around with the divider, made a scratch that will help me guide the exacto knife to get through the rest of the thickness of the of this material and so I'm just taking it piece by piece cut across a line where I started let the exacto knife follow that scratch groove cutting through the vinyl stencil material I wish I had a, a better set of oh, a better set of drafting materials or a compass that I could put a exacto knife into. Anyway, this seems to be working okay. So then I'm going to take this little forceps then, and then I can peel out, weed out that material. I'm just going to keep going around, and that will give me the circle that I need them to uh, showing up. Anyway, that's what I'm doing take that out and that will allow me then to paint inside that with gold paint and uh, then I'll go over the top of that with with uh, black paint so let's see what it looks like when I'm done here okay it's too uh, hard to see there's little wee tiny, you can see where there's tiny little bubbles in here, so use this nice smooth backside of the forceps to kind of burnish the edge down. Force any bubbles off of that edge. That's a piece of glass. We just need a gold ring to go around that dial, and that's what we're going to end up with. Okay, let's see how this works. And we'll just, we'll just, I don't know if this is going to paint on. I should dab it on. I don't know. Let's see what happens with a bit of cotton. That's going to be too thin. Alright, well, let's just paint it like this.
and hopefully it'll look okay. I think. Okay, this is dried. And what I've got to do, because I tried pulling it up here, and it's pulling the paint off. So I have to go along the edge with a razor knife. And make sure that the paint and the stencil are separated before I can pull. Hey, okay, now I've got this section. Now I can take and pull this. And what I'm doing is removing the vinyl from the area that's going to get painted black. It leaves a nice clean line that way. I don't have to touch this up over here. I'll just continue with that all the way around. Then we'll do the painting of the black. And uh, see how we turn out. Okay, that's that. Now I'll touch up where it tore and we'll have. Okay, and then after I do the black, we'll take off the center part and we'll be all set to go. Alright, I painted the corners all black and then I peeled off the center part. Uh, I don't really like the way this turned out. It, uh, there it is. Not particularly impressed by it. What I would do next time is, and I'm going to do that for the bottom panel anyway, is uh, use spray paint. Uh, I think it'll work better. Okay, I did the stencil. It's the spray painting of the gold. Now I take the outside stuff off and that'll be painted black. Okay, get the that stripped off. Now we take this outside and we paint the black. And the spray worked pretty well. I had to take it outside. I had a couple problems. I placed this on a sheet of plastic and the wind blew the plastic over and it touched the stuck to the wet paint, pulled some of it off. And so I had to touch it up down here. And uh, the other problem I had is uh, some little speckles that are in here, tiny, tiny speckles. And I have an oak tree in the backyard that's infested with aphids and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of aphids. And it's basically raining honeydew in our backyard. And so tiny bee pieces of that honeydew get on everything, including our cars and including some of this here. Not on here because it had the, had the uh, stencil on it. But this is how this one turned out. And uh, let's see. There's the name stripe around. Uh, I'm pleased with the way it looks. Uh, it's much better than using the paint on stuff. If I had just the other one piece to do all over again, I'd 
uh, half tempted to do it, but it's a lot of work and I maybe should just leave well enough alone. Anyway, this is looking pretty good. Here's what I used. I had made a, a print of, of that. I uh, captured it from the internet and then reverse printed it uh, like this. And then what I did was I placed a, put the uh, stencil material on here, on the other side of course, and uh, traced using uh, carbon paper, traced it onto the back of the stencil, then cut the letters out, weeded it, and uh, when I did, and the same thing here, used stencil material around, did the gold, then I peeled off this, this part surrounding of the stencil so I could paint that black and then I removed the center part and this is what we got and I think it looked fine in the, in, in, in the clock. Here's our glass. I'm put it like this. And we're going to put it into that slot. There's a slot here, kind of a rabbit joint. And, uh, okay, Ooh, take it easy, Perry. We'll let that fall to the bottom. And then what we got to do, we have to put these strips in here. Okay, you got a piece of paper under where the nail is. Just started with a hammer and now I take a clamp. Paper keeps it from scratching painting on the glass. And I just use this clamp. Push the nail and flush. I should actually stay with just that one. That's a wise idea. At least. Okay, top. Scroll down. And there is the bottom glass. And now I'll hang it back up with the pendulum on it, see what she looks like. Okay, there we are. Well then, that's about the best I can do. So, hope the owner's happy. <laughs>